I'll totally admit that I felt like I was grounding myself from my phone and it felt like <laughs> I, want to, I want to be able to use my phone at night. I don't know if I'm going to be able to do that. Really deep dive into who you are following. I need to know what people are doing. Elevated level of dopamine. I missed a call from no one. Those apps are making you addicted. But listen, but listen. John Mayer unboxing Chanel product. Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Katie, and today is May 1st, and that means it's another year of simple challenge, and it's a phone detox. The whole objective of this month is to use my phone a whole lot less. It's not gonna be so much about not using my phone at all, and this also isn't a social media detox. I definitely am on my phone as a whole, and yes, sometimes that's on social media, way too much. So I don't think it's like what I'm doing on my phone is the issue. I think it's that I'm on my phone at all is the issue. And so that's what I'm trying to like get a handle on. So for me, this digital detox is going to be about using my phone less and living more. Because I'm sure you're a lot like me in the sense that like picking up the phone just to like check things or do I have a new email or what's happening on Instagram? like. It is a natural reflex. It's become a reflex that I don't even know I'm doing. So a few things that I think you should know about me before going into this. So my husband is not on any form of social media whatsoever. Now at this point, you know that I'm obviously on YouTube because here I am on YouTube. I'm also on Instagram. Um, I don't do Snapchat. I've never had a Twitter and I do, I am on Facebook. I don't really use it a lot anymore. I stopped using it mainly because I do so much YouTube and Instagram now that I don't want to have like yet another thing. So my husband, like I said, he's not on any form of social media whatsoever. So I think that within my own home, it's very noticeable how much I am on the phone in comparison to how much he is on the phone because he's hardly ever on his phone. I love my phone for more than just social media. I am like, I'm never not using my phone when I'm doing a boring mundane task. I use my phone to listen to podcasts and watch YouTube, which sometimes I don't really watch it, but I'm like listening to it. But if I'm like cooking dinner, putting away laundry, folding laundry. That's a sense of like entertainment why I'm doing the boring stuff at home that needs to be done, right? That's like my way to get through it. I think we should all do that. If you're not doing that, get on that. Find some podcasts, um, Popcast, Bitch Sesh, Forever 35. Those are just a top three that I'll tell you right now. Just get on those. But in terms of just like mindless scrolling and the time suck that is the phone, um, it's not good. It's not good. I need to I need to stop that and I need to like just be more present. So I think the main rules for myself, and you might be like, these aren't strict enough rules, Katie. The main thing is that like when my husband comes home from work, so mainly, you know, around six o'clock I want to put my phone upstairs and charge it upstairs in our bedroom from like six to like nine or ten o'clock basically so through dinner through bedtime and then I'd like to charge my phone outside of my bedroom at night I don't know if I'm gonna be able to do that the bad thing about that is that blue light that you're like it's not good for your brain at night to go to bed looking at that it like disrupts your sleep mode but yeah so mainly at night I don't want to use my phone between the hours of 6 and bedtime but then at bedtime I don't want to use it either that's like a lot of my prime like Insta story time I act like this is such a big priority I need to know what people are doing but listen but listen if I would have missed John Mayer unboxing Chanel product that they gave him because he did a smoky eye tutorial the week prior, I would be really bummed if I missed out on that. Okay, that is my livelihood. That made my day this morning that he unboxed a Chanel thing of lipsticks. So I don't want to miss out on that. I don't. I just wanted to report that I'm about to go into Trader Joe's and I'm going to leave my phone in the car.
So I've got a post-it with what I need to buy, and I'm not going to listen to a podcast. I'm not going to be on my phone if there's a line, although it's early morning, so I won't really be in line, which is my whole reason to go to Trader Joe's in the morning. Um, but um, I don't have to pick up my son from school and to, for like two hours, so I'm not going to lose track of time without my phone. Um, that was my one concern because I actually don't have a working watch anymore. I do have a couple watches, but I need to get the batteries. That's one thing I need to do this month is get the batteries fixed on my watches so that I can be places without a phone and still know what time it is. Or, you know what? Imagine asking someone, excuse me, do you know what time it is? Like it's 2001. Can you imagine? So, um, yeah, if I need to know what time it is desperately, I will ask a stranger. Um, <laughs> I love talking to people when I'm out, so that's never a problem, but... Okay, here we go. Phone, you're staying in the car. Well, I'm back, I made it. I missed a call from no one. <laughs> so it can be done. You can run an errand without your phone. Also, while I was in there, I actually wanted to take a picture of something for someone, um, of a certain kind of yogurt, but I was like, I'll just tell the person what it was. I don't. They don't need to see the picture of it. Like, we used to do that without pictures of things. I wanted to look at something in my calendar. I was like, do, does my daughter need to bring snacks for soccer this week? I think it's this week. Um, but anyway, no big deal. I can buy snacks now and have them for later. So it can be done. So June has begun and I've made it to the end of my phone detox. Now, before I go into how the phone detox affected me, I wanted to share with you some things that I had sort of read and researched along the way about phone usage and what it can do to our brain and overall our productivity levels. So the one sort of shocking statistic is that the average person checks their phone from 50 to 300 times a day. So the process of using our phone and everything that we get sort of as like a reward system of like information or likes or follows or all of that type of stuff when you're using your phone, using social media and all of that, is that it's sending an elevated level of dopamine, which is an addictive quality and can be as addicting as using crack cocaine, sending dopamine to your brain, which is addictive and also a lot of those apps that we use on our phone like Instagram and Facebook and Snapchat are developed to make you addicted to using them. It's how it works. It's how like we all want likes on our photos or comments or reposting or all of that stuff. Those apps are making you addicted. They're making you want to check back in and hence checking your phone up to 300 times a day. That's madness. The other thing that research shows is that when you're checking your phone, your level of cortisol in your brain elevates, which is a stress hormone. And so that's what makes a lot of people feel anxiety or feel stressed. And I came across an interesting quote recently that I think I saw on like a minimalist Instagram account that said, you'll never reach the end of the internet. So stop trying, which I thought was really great because sometimes you're on your phone and you're on Instagram or you're on Facebook or whatever, or just online or shopping or whatever you're doing, looking up information, you're never going to reach the end of it. It's fine. You can put your phone down. You're never going to reach the end of the friggin' internet. Something that I also saw from Mel Robbins on her Instagram was that she posted that it can take you 23 minutes to get back on track if you were focusing on a task and you did something like check your phone or do something else. It can take you 23 minutes to get back on track on the task that you were originally doing. That, at the end of the day, can be a lot of lost time either at work or around your home or whatever you're doing. And I have certainly found that that's true even just at home. All of a sudden, I will, as an instinct, look at my phone and then 30 minutes goes by and I'm like, what happened? I had stuff to do. <laughs> what just happened? And one of the things I wanted to do was unfollow a lot of people on Instagram. And that is something that I did. I, I think at one point I followed over 2,000 people and my goal has been to maintain an under 1,000 um, like follower limit or something or whatever. So I'm following under 1,000 people, which I feel is a really good limit. I unfollowed a lot of people during one day, but then it sort of took on like the rest of the month as I would go through my feed and I would see things come up and I'm like, who is this person? And then I'm like, I don't even like this person's content or this person is not inspirational to me at all. I would just unfollow like as I would see things pop up in my feed. So the interesting thing was that like right after I did that, I saw a quote on Instagram, shockingly, that said, sometimes the best way to grow is to subtract. 
And I thought that this was true in a lot of different ways. And this really sort of speaks to my whole year of simple that I've been doing overall, because I could say that about my declutter month that I did. Oh my gosh. Or like my no buy that, you know, taking away items from my closet has helped me better utilize my closet and helped me see what I love that much more. So it's helped me in terms of that. But if I want to take it specifically to Instagram and how many people I follow, I feel like you're really able to see and consume the information from people whom you want to if you are following less people. What I've also noticed is that I hear people on Instagram talk a lot about like their insecurities or that like can the comparison game or that people are always portraying this perfect life on Instagram and it makes people feel not great about their own life or that they're not living up to something that they should be. My suggestion to you if you're feeling that way is really go in and take a really deep dive into who you're following because who you follow should be like people that inspire you, people that give you great ideas, people that motivate you, people that you love the way they dress and not that it's something crazy ass aspirational expensive bullshit that you're never gonna actually wear like get inspired by people that wear things in the same price point as you like unfollow people that you feel like only carry designer fucking handbags really deep dive into who you are following and I will tell you that that will make a really big difference in what you're seeing okay so what did I learn overall from my phone detox certainly I learned that using my phone is such an instinct that I don't even realize I'm doing and that if my phone is near me, I will want to check it. It's just as simple as that. If I, my phone is near me, my brain is somehow connected to my phone. And so the only way for me to disconnect the two is for me to be in a separate room from my phone. And I know that that sounds so stupid, but I know y'all can relate. So what I did at night from the hours of like six to nine, basically like when my husband got home from work, when we were having family dinner and then getting the kids ready for bed, I would charge my phone upstairs in my bedroom. So it was just away from me. So really out of sight, out of mind and that helped me disconnect from my phone like mentally and made me not want to just pick it up because it was there and so that really helped probably the night be more efficient too to be quite honest so the other thing that I learned is that using my phone at night has definitely done something to my sleep and not doing that mindless scroll like in the dark laying in bed gives me a better sleep. So the last week of my phone detox, I did charge my phone outside of my bedroom. And again, that separation of not having myself connected to my phone. And I'll totally admit that I felt like I was grounding myself from my phone and it felt like I want to, I want to be able to use my phone at night. <laughs> um, I will say that I didn't really realize because I do get normally eight hours of sleep. My kids are older now. I'm not like in that baby like crazy sleep schedule anymore. Like we're getting a full night's sleep. But I realized that sometimes my brain is not getting like a full relaxed sleep. And I think it has to do with the fact that I scroll on my freaking phone a lot at night and that light in your face before you go to bed and that like cortisol level and dopamine level and all of that happening in your brain is just not good. That's not a good sleep state for your brain. And so um, this phone detox ended, I will say I'm recording this a little bit late. My phone detox ended um, about a week ago and I have used my phone phone in bed since the phone detox has stopped and I've noticed that like my I don't feel as rested when I wake up anymore but I also liked in the morning that when I woke up and my phone wasn't in the same room as me it was like I just sort of woke up and stretched and got up and went and washed my face and was just more like leisurely about the morning um when my phone is in my room like I'll just wake up I'll look at my phone I'll scroll see what's happening and it's like you just get into that stupid like you're a robot I'm a robot and I'm just like okay what's new and it's just feels so stupid actually so it was nice to not wake up next to my phone okay so now that the phone detox is done and over what am I going to carry over as a habit from this experience um, I think the one main thing is that if I really like want to be invested in my time with my family or 
whatever I'm doing, it's better for me not to have my phone right next to me. And sometimes I do want to have my phone next to me because sometimes we're doing something where I will want to take a picture of it for myself or whatnot. Um, so a lot of times I do have my phone next to me for those reasons. Um, family photos of like adventures and things that we do are like always going to be the most important thing to me, to be honest. Um, but you know, if we're just like playing outside at home or watching a movie or doing something like that, I don't need to have my phone right next to me and I can feel fine not having my phone attached to me. And that's a good feeling. The other thing is as stupid as it sounds, I don't ever want to follow more than a thousand people on Instagram. So I am for sure. And even a thousand feels like a lot <laughs> to be quite honest. Um, but when I went through like individually, there's people, you know, there's people that like you don't know, but are in your community and you want to follow. And then there's like a certain amount of celebrity that you enjoy following and knowing what's going on. Um, and then there's like inspirational creative things too. And whatever your passion or hobby is, if that be fashion or travel or food or whatever that is. So I think when you like realistically break that down, a thousand kind of does make sense sense, um, even though it seems like an overwhelming number. But as I said before, I feel like if you're someone who feels like FOMO, the fear of missing out, or you feel like you are in the comparison game of comparing yourself against other people and other people's lives and families and all of that stuff, or if you feel like you take on the anxiety or the frustrations of people voicing their political or religious beliefs or whatnot on Facebook, um, or you know any of that, like unfollow those people, just unfollow or mute or whatever. No one will ever know that you did it. I mean, the unfollow they might, but the mute they won't. So I'm telling you, you will feel so much better because you should be only consuming things that fill you up. So that's the biggest thing I can say. And I don't know if I said this in the beginning of the video, but fun fact, I was the last person I know to own a cell phone. And I can't even believe looking back at it that I lived in, at the time it was San Francisco when I got my first cell phone, but I can't even believe that I lived in the city and used to take a subway to work and all of that stuff like with the only entertainment being a book. I was the last person to want a cell phone and my husband and all of my friends at the time were so frustrated with me because I was going to someone's house in the city and I got lost and I had to stop off at a gas station, use a payphone with a quarter and say, where exactly is Cesar Chavez Boulevard or street or whatever it is? And they were like, you just need to get a damn cell phone already. And I was like, I don't want one. I don't want the distraction. I don't want to be found. I don't want it. So mm, all these years later, I really took to that cell phone thing, didn't I? <laughs> so um, yeah, so that was my phone detox month. And I feel like there were minor small changes, but sometimes those small changes are the things that really add up and make a big difference overall. All right, guys, so I'm already well into June, which is my water month water month. <laughs> so I'm going to be drinking a lot of water, peeing a lot, um, going to the bathroom. It might just be a montage of me drinking and peeing. I don't know. We'll see. That is all for today. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you again in another video real soon. Bye.